So usually when you use sensors with a microcontroller we may need one, two, three or even more than ten sensors in the same microcontroller. So today we will uh, see together how to use many sensors um, in the same ADC for one microcontroller. So as you can see here I do have four potentiometer and all of them at, are at the zero position or the infinite uh, resistance and when I will move them you can see the value here is red on a different pin so each one of them is connected to a different pin and I can control them one by one by increasing the value or decreasing them so today you will learn how to have multiple sensors on one microcontroller before jumping to the video, let me take the moment and thank everyone for their support. I will keep doing my best to provide this quality content. So as usual, to support the channel, you can give us a thumbs up, make a comment or subscribe and stay tuned. This is Weave Tutorial and today you will learn how to set up and understand the multi-channel solution for the STM32 F1 ADC. As usual, the code that we are going to share is available on GitHub. You can find the link in the description below. The language that we are going to use is only C, the program to code is KL version 5. Finally, you may need to take a look to the previous videos to understand how we have set up the ADC from scratch, but if you are interested to understand the logic of multi-channel reading, this video would be just fine for you. For the hardware, we are going to use the STM32F1 based board, which is the AKA Blue Pill, and also 4 potentiometer or variable resistance. You can use up to 16 potentiometer, but also if you have only 2, that will be just fine to, to run the example. Okay, so for the tutorial, first of all, we are going to take a look on how the STM32F1 ADC proposing some solution to have a multi channel reading. And then we are, ha we are going to work through a workaround because the multi-channel reading is requiring some um, knowledge that is a little bit complicated. Then we are going to start to code and have the ATC multi-channel initialization function. After that, we are going to start reading the data and finally making some tests and debug. Okay, so let's start with the first one with the ADC multi-channel solution. As we discussed in the previous tutorial, the ADC for the STM32F1 have 17 channels. 16 are directly connected to the pins and one channel is connected internally to the microcontroller when it reads the temperature. So these 16 or 17 channels are connected to the ADC where the conversion is happening. So this is depending on your uh, STM, but the STM32F1 usually have two, some of the variants have three uh, ADCs. Finally, when the conversion ends, it goes to the uh, data register where you can, re can read the data and understand the value that you have. So generally there is two ways to have a multi-channel. So in the first example, normally you can read only um, by channel by channel and this is the only thing what happened. So there is a register, actually this uh, sequence register, there's the three register of this one going from se uh, sequence 1 to sequence um, 17 when you can put the number, the channel that will be written. So the channel will be written one after one, not in a parallel way. And there's two mode, if you take a look to the reference uh, manual, there's a scan mode where the ADC will go through all of them one by one and depending on the sequence that you put in the ADC sequence register or discontinuous mode where there's a scanning of a limited channels. So the first one scanning mode will go through all the channels or the old sequence that you will put within your um, a sequence register where the discontinuous mode have a limited number of channel but uh, like you can choose a more um, um, like a, a shorter sequence however both of this solution using DMA to, to make the manipulation and it makes the synchronization and the data setup a little bit way more complicated so we are not going to go through this solution so if we go back now to the workaround so in the previous tutorial we have created um, one channel reading and what we are going to do right now is reading at the same way for a single channel but changing the channel after the reading and the, and the end of the conversion. So let's take the program or the idea that we have taken in the previous video. So we are going to update 
the first channel only, so the SQL1, or and saying we are going to read channel 1, 2, 3, up to 17. And after that, so there is a conversion and reading the data. And as soon as we read the data, we go again there, but we update from the list of the target channels. So we will set up initial, initially a list of target channels that we will be injecting in the SQR1 each time that we complete conversion. So this is a, uh, a way to, to or work around, around to, to not have enough complication and to keep the right track about how the data is read. So now that we have an idea about how we are going to work, there is nothing better to go and jump to the code preparing the initialization function. So here we start at the empty, almost blank main program. We're just adding the ADC library that we used before, but not really a big need. And then uh, a small reminder about the connection between the pin and the channel. So as you can see from PA0 to uh, PC5. And after that, just the assistic init function. And this is the function that will initialize the delay uh, that we do have. Um, we do have in the header here, however, I added the enum for the channels. The enum will give the number 0 to PA0 and then 16 to the temp sensor. And this is the number of channels that we do have within our ADC. And this is something that we are going to use for initializing our multiple reading um, ADC. Okay, so let's start first of all by initializing the pins. We will need to create a small variable that will be the one that we will put the um, channels that we would like to activate or the pin. So that's why I put it here, the channels where we do have the pin number. So we are going to help ourselves by putting the pin, which will be much easier to understand from the um, hardware perspective. So let me start and put char ADC channels. And that will be equal to, let's pick up some pins, so PB1 and then PA4, for example, PA0 and then PA1. Should be good. And yeah, of course, that's an array, so I should add this parenthesis and the comma at the end. And I'm going to add another variable, which will be channels. And this one is just the number of channels that we are going to loop through this array. Feel free to, you can make the count by a program, but I prefer putting this one as an extra security for my program, something hard written. Okay. And I'll be adding also a small char i equal to zero for making some computation for, for example, initializing the pins. So one of the steps, we need to initialize the pins so they will be um, as, um, how to say, as an input for the analog. So what we are going to do for i equal to zero, i less than channels, i plus plus. Okay, and let's make a if condition as we are going to use a number of channels we need to play a little bit and this is exactly what we have done in the previous example so we, we are going to do if the channels or this one the add channels here and I'm putting here just another thing that I almost forget I'm putting here 17 as the maximum number where 17 is a total of the pins uh, or total of the channels feel free to put more but um, this is not a magic number. This is a number that normally if you would like to read one channel at a time, this is the best one. Okay. So if ADC channel here of I is less than eight, so it means the number is less than eight, then we are going to activate. So the init JP here and the PA and for the number of the pin will be just easy as the and the number of the channel that will be a real match and for the uh, option information it will be an input and it will be an input as um, analog okay then we do have an else if the channel 
is less than 10. Here, 10. Then we are going to activate the port B and the channel here, minus 8. So which is PB0 or PB1. After that, if here, you don't, we can put 16 here, but actually it's, a, yeah, actually it's 15 less than 16. Yeah. So what we can put here is PC and this one minus 10. Like this, we will be looping through these numbers. So PB normally will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, it will be 9 and that would be minus 1 so it will be uh, PB1 and the pin itself will be uh, programmed to be an analogic, uh, analog input. Okay, so now we completed the pin setup part. We can go to the register first to set up the uh, clock and also the registers for the analog input. So if we go quickly to the reference manual and we go to the where is it? The RCC, and we jump quickly to the RCC registers. It's APB2. So this is what we'll say to the program that we would like to um, initiate the ADC um, peripheral. So there is ADC1 and ADC2. Just now we are going to use ADC1, which is um, the hexadecimal number of 201 because we also need to initiate the alternative function so 201 and let's go here so we have to go for the setup the registers first of all the clock so it will be rcc apb1 to enable and don't forget it's or equal and the hexadecimal 201 okay after that we have to go to the peripheral of the ADC itself. So let's go back. So this is the clock and to say we are going to activate the um, analog peripheral. After that we have to go to the analog itself peripheral and start playing a little bit with it. So that's the peripheral and if you go to the registers there's a few stuff that we need to do. First of all we go to the control register 2 and this one the add-on or the analog on let me go a little bit down and quickly the add-on we put it off we shut up shut down everything and we start programming a little by little so let's go to this one so we are going to put the add-on is off and after that we are restarting it again put it as one and we wait a little bit we have to wait a little bit we put a continuous conversion so we can have directly the reading and the reading which is quite fine so you're you keep reading and you have a um, like a quick input and again to start you have to put again so like they say as i say here conversion start when this bit value is one you read it to it just a moment so you have to wait a little bit we are putting like some delay time but after that we have to put again so it we have to put twice so let's go back it's quite very simple so adc1 control register 1 and that will be equal actually control register 2 sorry will be just equal 0 to shut down everything just in case we repeat again so adc1 is equal so adc1 control register 2 now we can start using this one so equal 1 and this is to start the hc and after that we add a delay function a delay ms we can put 100 millisecond now no worry about that after that we just put the adc1 but so control register 2 will be and equal to a 2 and this is to have continuous reading okay finally to start our ADC we just have to add another ADC 1 control 2 and it will be or equal 1 this is the real start starting the conversion 
Okay, so I need to put it, some comment here. And that should be fine. So let's save and build to see if there's any problem. Okay, there's no error, no problem. So now that we went through all of this, we can um, put everything in a function and move it to the ADC drive a library. So let's copy the whole thing here. Okay, let's go to the drive, create a new function. Let's call it, as we said, so void and then ADC multi okay and channel in it as an input we will need to specify which ADC we would like to use so char ADC and then we will need the also the channels so char channels and finally we will need the array of the ADC channels okay so let's put here and let's discover quickly okay so the i so we will need the int i here which is equal to zero even char should be more than fine okay and after that so now we need to make a small if condition if ADC is equal to one, then we go for this part. Else, if, so we can just copy the same. We put this, and instead of, okay, there's one issue here. What's going on? Yeah, I have to add this one equal to. And we just change this one. So this one is very important. It's let's go back again to the uh, to take a look. It should be four four hundred one, but just in case, yeah. So the nine is two, then the ten is four hundred one. So ADC two. So if we go here, so four hundred one, and we need to put two everywhere. Two, 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 and two. Okay, so let's save it, add an extra line here, copy the function to the header, so we do have a clean stuff going on, add this one, nope, this one, save again, and we are good. So now we should add, should be able to add this function after this one to initialize, so ADC, we are going to use ADC1 channels is channels so we can just delete this one and for the chart we are going to use the adc channels let's add the camera at the end check if everything going well save for everything and build zero error and zero warning so now we initialized the um, multi-channel um, program let's go to the next one and start the reading now that we completed the function that help us to initialize a multiple reading for the ADC, we can start building the function that will make the reading itself. Okay, so before we jump directly on the reading, there is one thing that I would like to add here in the, um, the initialization function. So at the end of everything, when we start the preparation of the reading, one thing I would like to add is to have here the ADC so even before we start like here so let me show you directly in the um, data sheet or the reference manual so let's go here so when the reading happen the ADC will take a look to the sequence and we need to put here that the channel only we are updating only this sequence the channel that we would like to read in this sequence so let's go back again here and what we are going to input is the ADC ADC1 SQ so just a moment here SQ3 this one will be equal you can put just equal actually like this let me bring it one step ahead will be equal to the ADC channel of one like this ok 
okay and this is to initialize the first channel this is one step i forgot in the previous uh initialization so let's put here this one here and this one here and changing adc2 okay that's a very important part so when we start the next step that and this is what we are going to do right now we are ready to have everything so the first thing to do when we are going to read uh we will put a while loop a really while with a one like this and what we have to do if and we are going to um use exactly the same thing we used for a single reading so if i have adc the function adc check and i'm going to use the adc1 just for here and then we expand to the both so if adc1 so if we do have um th this function will find that we have an end of conversion so it's end of conversion at the adc1 so what it will do first of all it will take a kind of a, a temporary data so let's put int so we need an int here and we called a temp reading okay which is equal to zero <clears throat> then what we are going to put so temp reading will be equal to the adc1 and the data register so this is the output from the conversion okay and after that so something here is wrong what's going on yeah it's not only the adc so if adc check what is going on too few argument for adc check let's go to adc check and check it so the adc check is i have to adc so actually i don't need to put any port and any pin so that's something good that they found out and i have to go here and remove we just need to check there's an end of conversion <clears throat> okay good so it should be corrected now perfect and what we why we don't need it in this function and it was a mistake in the in the past one because there is no input related to the port or the pin this is really only to the analog and the channels okay so we are going to take the, the conversion from the data register and put it in the temp after that we will need to have let's take add here so as we need the channels we need to have also um, an array of integer to stock the data so it's an integer and we are going to put the data inside it let's call it analog rx here and it will have also 17 just in case <clears throat> okay and after that so what we are going to put so we will need to have kind of um, um, a reading iterator so I will put here another one so we can use the I for the moment so analog this one the analog Rx here of I which is equal zero will be equal to the temp rx multiply by 1000 and divided by zero the fff for the people who didn't um seen the previous tutorial i just would like to do this one to have a value between zero and 1000 to have a more clear picture on where i am from the value perspective this is much easier to read for me and also the why i'm dividing by zero fff because this is the full range of the um, analog um, that we do have the analog a uh, digital converter okay int interesting yes because i should not add this one okay so this is good and after that i will put i plus plus incrementing i so then we do have a small condition if i is equal to channels so if we already scan everything we need so then what we have to do is putting i equal zero again then also adc so the adc one for this example for the 
then SQR, the one that we discussed previously, will be equal to the ADC, so same here, ADC channel of I. I put here I, which is like the number is zero will become zero, and after that we just break. We finish all the conversion that we needed, we can leave this loop. Else, so if I is still less than the number of channels, so what we have to do at that time is quite very simple and straightforward. It's just taking the new I here and we get ready for the next conversion. That's all. So if I save and build, there's one warning. I guess I know where is it, but okay, there's statement and reachable. Which one? Okay, so if that's interesting. So if this one is like this, if I equal channels, hmm, let me confirm. So I is equal to zero, channels equal to four statement is unreachable. Ah, of course, I didn't put the whole thing here. Let's check. Zero warning, zero error. Perfect. It's always good to read these warnings and to be sure that everything is correct. Okay. Okay, good. So let's save and then put everything in a function that will um, have the whole picture of the ADCs. And let's go here. So let's put the while, whole while here. Okay. And go to ADC and start writing our nice ADC here. So it will be a void and then ADC multi here. Multi channel put ch and then rx so as an input we will need to have the char of the adc itself also the char of the channels how many channels we need because we need this variable and then the two other one which is quite now start to be annoying a char for the adc channels And also, finally, the int for the array of the analog Rx. <coughs> okay, we have declared everything. So why we do still have this one? We expect, yep. Yeah. Perfect, so let me paste this one. So we need to have the temp, so I can bring both temp now and this one so we don't need them anymore here we can bring them here and what we can do as simple as usual if adc is equal to one then we go here and after that this one else we just copy the whole thing Actually, else we put it with the if, which is much better. Just in case for people who does not make a mistake. Two, so, and we change two here, two here, and two here. I hope that changed everything correctly. Okay, let's check. So we need to copy this one in the header file. the comma then have the multi reading and put it like this okay so let's remove ADC and we put ADC1 as we are initializing ADC1 here also should better to put ADC1 to have more comprehensive a uh, code and for channel here so ADC channels also and in it analog rx okay so there seems to be no error but always build and check there's three warnings okay we add a new line here okay let's build again and check two warnings 
Okay again. Save build. Zero error, zero warning. Okay, so now we have prepared um, the reading. So we initialized and reading, and this is uh, all all done for this part. We completed the initialization, the reading, and now this is the most exciting part. So we are testing and debugging. Hope that everything goes well. Finally, we are at the last part where we can really playing and enjoying with our electronics. So first of all, let's take a look to the circuit. It's a very simple one where I have connected the four potentiometer to the blue pill. So each one of the potentiometer is connected to a different uh, pin so we can visualize and we should expect when I be turning one of them a value within the array, the analog RX should be changing. Okay, so let's quickly save, build again and load inside our um, a blue pill. So and this time, especially for the visualization, we're not going to use UART. We are going to use the debug mode. So let's push the debug mode here and I will show you a way so we can visualize the data and really debugging using the debug mode. So before running our program, what I'll be doing, I'll be adding this ADC channel here to the watch one. So I can have a visualization on my data and I really don't want to see it as a hexadecimal. So what I will do, I will put hexadecimal, I uncheck the hexadecimal display. Okay. And actually it's not the ADC channel. That's, that's a big mistake. It's the analog read data. Okay. Let's add it to the watch one here and remove the hexadecimal display. So let's run now and see the values. Okay, I'm, I'm seeing values here, which means our initialization has worked. But what I really don't like is I'm seeing very near values where what I'm seeing here, I'm seeing in my circuit, the positions are really different. So let's try to move and see what's going on. Hmm, I think there's something. So even I'm moving, data is not changing here. Last one, last hop. Okay. Okay, that, that's good. So, like, only this one is changing, but uh, so it changed for everything. This means that something is wrong within the code, and let's figure that out. Okay, so let's go to the here. The initialization should be good. So, let's take a look. So, if we have the end of conversion, we can do it. Okay quite obvious. So you see this part should happen only when we do an end of conversion. So we should not do it only if we had the end of conversion. And if we do not have an end of conversion, we should keep waiting. Same here. Let's correct it too. Okay. Plus Oh, I'm seeing something really, really wrong. So you will understand it too. So even um, let let me again save again, build, load. So you'll see even with this one, the mistake will keep doing. So let's go to the debug mode and let's run and visualize. So you still see here. Even I move everything. I should like everything is responding to this one and I will explain why so that's quite um, be careful about this mistake but uh, I'm happy that I make it so I can share it with you so let me go back here and go back from the debug mode so somehow they put it the sequence for the um, ADC starting from sequence 3 and we, I put it sequence 1 so whatever I change here if it's not sequence three that will not affect our program so i have to put sequence three here and this is because the order sequence three is the first and then sequence two and then sequence one okay good and if you guys have some like need more details i'll be happy to answer your replies in the comment area let's save build and load so now let's have a final look of this time there's no issue and you can see we do have four different values so let's take a look here let's change the values let's 
move them and see if things are moving accordingly. So if I move this one, see, this one is increasing, you can see here, and then if I change this one, we should have a zero, so I'm moving this one from the minimum to the maximum, I'm sorry, here, let's move this one, let's put everything, like all of them to zero first of all, just to to be sure that all of them are working properly. And, okay, so the opposite, and this one, two to the zero. So I'll start with the first one. It goes from zero to almost 1000. Let's go back to here. And the next one, from zero to 1000. And then the last two one, this one, zero to 1000. And last, one here, zero one thousand. So you can see by the end, you will have at your main program the ADC, the analog RX data that you can use to make your operation based on what you read. So you can add a lot of sensors that needs an ADC, and you can read many of them using only one ADC converter. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this um, episode. Thank you a lot for following and have a very weird day.